he went down and the cop in the basement was this Joe Martin who was running a little boxing school. Cassius told the story years later that for a minute he forgot about his bike because the sight of this boxing gym, the smell of the leather and the sweat and the excitement, the action of boys in, in a ring hitting each other black and white together. And he, you know, reported the crime and I'm going to get the guy and I'm going to, you know, kill him. Joe Martin said, well, um, do you know how to fight? Fight. And the rest, as they say, is history. That was a scene from the upcoming four-part PBS documentary series, Muhammad Ali, featuring one of the most iconic and consequential figures of the 20th century, young Cassius Clay from Louisville, who later became Muhammad Ali and a three-time heavyweight boxing champion, captivated billions of fans with his power in and out of the ring. This series kicks off Sunday, and we cannot wait. Join me now, one of the directors of the new series, acclaimed documentary filmmaker Ken Burns, and Rashida Ali, the daughter of Muhammad Ali, who's also featured in the documentary. I'm so excited to have you guys on. I cannot wait to watch this film. Rashida, your dad is my all-time hero. Uh, my mom and I watched all of his fights in my era. You know, I don't go all the way back to the beginning. Let me just be clear. We're talking about in the 80, you know, up, up until he retired. But my mother just absolutely loved him, and I loved him, too. Tell me, what, what will people learn that's new in this documentary that you're excited about? Well, first of all, Joy, it's good to see you again. Thanks for having us on the show. Um, every time I, uh, I watch the documentary, I get chills because it's such a beautiful depiction. And I have to you know, say that Ken and Sarah Burns and, and, and David McMahon um, did an incredible job with, with capturing my dad's very complex history um, without losing the essence of who he truly was as a person. His, his goodness, his kindness shine through. And again, um, when you're watching, you know, a lot of people think they know a lot about my dad. And I'll be honest with you, I've seen uh, bits and pieces of from the documentary that I didn't even know. So, like, there were family footage that I've never seen before of me and my mom and my dad and, you know, and us four kids um, just hanging out at the house. It was it brought tears to my eyes because, you know, to see my dad as a boxer, that's one thing. And most people have probably seen all the footage from from that part of his life. But, but as we all know, that's a short part of his life because most of his life, he's a, he's a civil rights activist. He's a, uh, he's a poet. He's a uh, humanitarian. He's a father. He's a husband. He's a brother. He's a friend. So, you know, and he combated Parkinson. So you're seeing all these really uh, aspects of my dad's life unfold in front of your eyes. And I want yeah. to thank um, Ken Burns, Sarah, for allowing my dad to control the narrative instead of them controlling it. Yeah, and I have to say, Ken Burns, I am a huge fan of yours uh, and your filmmaking, uh, so I am excited to talk to you today. I want to play a little bit. This is uh, talking about the activist part of what Rashida uh, Ali just said and, and the impact of Muhammad Ali as an activist. Take a look. Take a listen. Muhammad Ali was an activist who fought to reach us a certain way and to move America in a certain way and to move individuals in a certain way. I'm going to take this path. I believe that I'm right. And even if I'm not right, I'm still me. And to be able to follow that and to know that there was going to be an enormous price to pay for that and to have that be generational, to have that live on beyond you is extremely valuable. Ken Burns, uh, you've documented so many important figures in American history. What do you, what, in your view, what is most important about Muhammad Ali? Uh, you can't contain him. He's one of the biggest, most you know, wonderful human beings I've ever gotten to know. He's larger than life. It's it's his his flaws are big. His strengths are big. This is a story about freedom, which is incredibly hard to achieve if you're a black person in the United States on this continent, anytime since 1619 on. Um, it's about courage, not just inside the ring. This is a very difficult sport to play, uh, but outside of the ring in the stance he took, particularly about Vietnam, but in other places, as Rashida alluded to with um, regard 
regard to Parkinson's and that, you know, multi-decade struggle that he had there, but yet his reach was getting farther. And it is about the four-letter word that the FCC allows you and me to say, uh, Joy, uh, but we have a hard time really talking about, which is love. I mean, this guy touches every single aspect of the late 20th century, from the role of sports, the role of black athletes, to uh, ideas of black masculinity and manhood, to civil rights, to politics, to faith, to war, to sex. All of those things are contained, and they're all things that are happening today. So when we cut away from Howard Bryant there at the end, we're moving to a young woman marching in protest across the Brooklyn Bridge. We don't deliberately show you what the protest protest is, but all she thinks she needs to come to that protest is a simple black t-shirt with white letters with two words that say Muhammad Ali. It means mm. freedom. It mm. means courage. It means love. Amazing. Let me play one more clip. This is uh, Muhammad Ali with Malcolm X in Ghana. Take a look. In Accra, the capital of Ghana, thousands gathered at the airport to catch a glimpse of the world's new heavyweight champion. Outside his hotel, Ali heard a familiar voice. Brother Mohammed called Malcolm X, who was on his own overseas tour. He greeted Ali enthusiastically. I still love you, he told the boxer. You left the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Ali said. That was the wrong thing to do. There was little else to say. Malcolm walked away. That is so awesome. So my uncle Bennett was at the rumble, uh, or the rumble in the jungle in the Congo. So he, he told me so many amazing stories uh, about just the feeling that Muhammad Ali produced internationally for the That's diaspora. Right. And R Rashida, I'll, I'll throw that to you first, and then to you, Ken. The bigger picture of what he accomplished. What do you think is his great legacy beyond boxing? Well, that's tough, Joy. Um, I think his biggest accomplishment was his ability to um, unapologetically um, and sincerely devote his entire life to his faith and to follow it to the end of time. And with that became his love for people and serving others is what he did with his life. Um, in and out of the ring, all he thought about and talked about was how he was going to free his people and to make people feel special. And he did that. Yeah. And I have to, one selfish question for you, Ken Burns, as, a, as an aspiring documentarian myself. What, how do you choose the projects that you decide to commit to? Because you do such amazing work. How do you pick the next thing? You know, in some ways, Joy, the, 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 the facile, glib response is to say they pick us. We're just interested in good stories. And Sarah Burns, my oldest daughter, and her husband, David McMahon, and I have been working on this for years and years and years. And we're with PBS, which allows us the deep dive to spend seven years to discover the footage that even Rashida doesn't know of her daddy talking to her. You know, this is an, an amazing person who transcends the particular sport that he was involved in and gave us a, a kind of method of dealing with the problems you know this is we're in the middle of the struggle still and he's a good guidepost to all of that i mean you just you love him warts and all and and it's to me i i i'm more i can't think of a more satisfying experience that we've had as as filmmakers than than trying to wrestle this complex story to the ground and of course people like rashida who are in the film and who she carries particularly she carries the spirit of her father uh, everywhere. Give us a chance to understand this amazing American. If I were given a chance to go to dinner uh, with a couple of people that I've gotten to know over the f almost 50 years that I've been doing this, it would be Louis Armstrong and Muhammad Ali. Abraham Lincoln, a kind of distant third. I'm not sure he'd say much. He'd tell some <laughs> jokes. But to have Louis Armstrong <laughs> and to have uh, Muhammad Ali would just be the, the gift of all gifts. And they are as American as any anything. And I think this is yeah. the important thing. What he did was as a black man, and he did not forget where he came from. He, he achieved freedom, which is tough, but he didn't forget to pull everyone else along. And everyone around the world felt, anybody who felt the boot of the man mm. felt that he was speaking for them. You know, and when he goes, and Rashida and I can do this in unison, I've had 180 amateur fights, I've had 22 uh, professional fights, and I'm pretty as a girl. I'm pretty what he as was a girl. saying is, is black, <laughs> black is beautiful. And people yes. responded to that, and he changed ah. the whole dynamic, and everything is sort of before Ali and after yes. Ali. 
I am so excited to see this film. I, first of all, I want to come to that fictional dinner. If that ever happens, I'm going to Bogart that dinner. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rash Rashida, <laughs> listen, my, one of my favorite names is Rashida because every Rashida I know, and, even, and, and I work for one, I love them all because y'all are all amazing. That's just a name for amazing women. I love you guys both. Thank you. <laughs> Ken Burns, Thank I'm you. a fan. Rashida Ali, I'm a fan. Thank y'all both very much. Muhammad Ali premieres this Sunday at 8 p.m. on PBS. Can you tell I'm excited? Don't miss it.